is the third of seven sessions on understanding Islam, unpacking the Shahada. In this session, I'm going to speak about the importance of informing yourself about Islam, of taking responsibility for yourself to understand Islam. Um, just to summarize, Islam is based upon the Quran, which is revealed word to word to Muhammad, and also the Sunnah, the traditions of Muhammad, the biographies also of Muhammad, together forming the body of knowledge that has the teaching and the example of Muhammad. You can access this, this material for yourselves. You can buy the books. The Sahih al-Bukhari is there on the screen. It has nine volumes in a translation with Arabic and English side by side. The Sahih Muslim, uh, which was uh, collected by a man called Muslim, another secure collection of traditions. These are both regarded as very reliable, has four volumes. And there are six canonical uh, collections uh, for Sunnis that you can you can access all of them, and many of them are on the internet. The Quran can be accessed on the internet, and commentaries also. The commentary of Ibn Kathir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, has been translated into English, and it's very widely used by Muslims uh, in the West and uh, Muslims that speak English, and you can access that yourself. So if someone quotes a verse from the Quran and you wonder what it means, you can easily, within seconds, look up that commentary and see what Ibn Kathir said. It's, it's organized a little bit differently to the way you might normally think, so it takes a bit of getting used to, uh, but you can look up I issues for yourself. And that's, I want to empower people to understand Islam for themselves, because one of the problems is that people are very dependent on second-hand, third-hand information. It's very disempowering, and it causes difficulties for people. In fact, non-Muslims have a right to study Islam for themselves. Islam defines itself in contrast to Islam and Christianity. Sorry, Islam defines itself in contrast to Christianity and to Judaism. It, uh, is, Muslims are taught a lot of things about Christianity and Judaism. Al-Fatiha, which is the first chapter of the Quran, is also part of daily devotion for Muslims. It's, it's the equivalent in some ways devotionally of the Lord's Prayer. And it's recited 17 times a day as part of those mandatory five times a day prayers that Muslims say and uh, need to recite. And it is basically a prayer for guidance. Remember, Islam is about guidance. So it's saying, Allah, please show us the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast favored, not the path of those who earn thine anger, nor those who go astray. Now, who are those who are under the anger of God or those that have gone astray? According to a tradition of Muhammad, he said that those who've earned the anger are the Jews and those who've been led astray are the Christians. So uh, when Muslims pray 17 times a day, not to be like those who've earned the anger or not to go astray, uh, you could say they're praying not to be a Jew or a Christian. So there is a, at the heart of Islam a rejection of Christianity that's built in even to daily worship. It'd be a bit like the Lord's Prayer saying, may I not be like those unfortunate, accursed Muslims. <laughs> that's, that's the level of how deeply embedded rejection of Christianity and Judaism is in Islam. Um, this is a, um, uh, a little uh, video um, which is called The Best Al-Fatiha Ever. It's a recitation of Al-Fatiha in Arabic. And um, as that section comes up where it speaks about the straight path, you'll see a flash of lightning and a picture of um, a, a, a synagogue and a church will come up as the images that reflect not like those people. And you'll see that as we go through. I hope this will work. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Praise and thanks to Allah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim The most beneficent, the most merciful Malik Yawm Al-Din The only owner and ruler Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in You alone do we worship, so it begins with praise and here's the prayer, guide us on the straight path, pray for guidance, Islam's about guidance. The way of those on whom you've given your grace, there's the mosque. Not those who've earned your anger, the sin of God. Nor those who've gone astray, the church. 
Islam also has a number of theological claims that specifically reference Christians and Jews as well. Um, it also has more, more general claims that declares the superiority of Islam over other religions. So the Quran says that Muslims are the best people in creation with a destiny to guide all mankind. You are the best community that's been raised up for mankind. You command right conduct and forbid indecency, and you believe in Allah. So who has the authority, the divine mandate, to say what's right and wrong in the world? Muslims do. And here is a protester in Los Angeles. He's wearing the Muslim Brotherhood Pledge. He's, and it includes the phrase, I forbid what's wrong, and I, I command what's right. Now, how can you f command what's right and forbid what's wrong unless you have power? You have to be in charge in order to exercise this uh, divine calling. The Quran also says that it's the destiny of Islam to rule over other religions. He it is who sent his messenger with the guidance, remember guidance, and the religion of truth, that he may cause it to triumph over all religions. Uh, one translation translated that word as prevail over all religions. It's misleading. The Arabic really means to triumph. And there's a, a, a protester in New York, and he has a, a, a placard there with the black flag of Islam flying over the White House. Islam will dominate. Politically, Islam will rule America, he's saying. And he could just as well have been quoting from Surah 48, verse 28. Also, Islam uh, teaches that Muslims do not have the right to study Islam independently for themselves. Uh, sheikh al-Bouti, who was uh, a, sheikh, a leading sheikh in Syria, he was recently killed by a, a suicide bomber. He interprets Surah 1643, question the people of the remembrance, if it should be that you do not know, as evidence that if someone doesn't know a ruling in sacred law or the evidence for it, they must follow someone who does. So what he's saying is if you're a Muslim and you need guidance, you should find someone who knows more than you and do what they say. And everyone has someone else who tells them what they should do. What you're not supposed to do is read the Quran and the Sunnah for yourself and work out what you should do from that. That's regarded as very dangerous. I, I met a young man who'd converted to uh, Islam in Melbourne, and I said, oh, I've read, I've read the hadiths. I've read Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim from cover to cover. He said, he said oh, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I said, I found it very interesting. <laughs> and uh, you really do need to study it for yourself, although Islam doesn't encourage Muslims from, from doing this and doesn't encourage Muslims to do it. And in fact, um, many Muslims might learn to recite part or even all of the Quran in Arabic, but that doesn't necessarily mean they understand it. And classical Arabic in the Quran is very difficult to understand. There's some parts of the Quran that seem almost incoherent. The grammar is difficult to comprehend, and you understand it by working with a commentary. In fact, the translations that are done by Muslims are not literal translations, they're interpretations. So if there's a passage and they're not quite sure what it means, they'll look up the commentaries and they'll translate what the commentaries say the passage means. So the English translations are not a translation as we understand into translation. They're called an interpretation of the Quran. Sometimes Muslims say this is an interpretation of the Quran and uh, sometimes people have said, oh, that's because they have such a high regard for the Arabic. Well, it's not just that. It's actually that they're actually translating what people say it means, not what it literally means. So it means that information about Islam is not democratized. Islam is not kind of an open, open book for people to read. Very unlike the Bible. Everyone can read the Gospel. You can read everything there is to know about Jesus in an afternoon by reading the four Gospels. But the life of Muhammad is an 800-page book, and the Hadiths are many volumes, and the Quran is quite difficult to understand. It's written in difficult uh, classical Arabic, and it's, and it's not actually directly translated. It's interpreted. Now, Al-Bouti Al said that a formal opinion from a scholar is as binding from an ordinary, for an ordinary person, person as the words of the Quran are for the scholar. So that's how authority is organized. So authority in, in Islam is organized in a way um, that is not democratic. It doesn't liberate individual people to make decisions about their faith or understand their own faith. And that's quite important when you're engaging with Muslims to, to get a grip of. Um, but in the light of this, it's important for Christians to take authority and responsibility for their own knowledge of Islam. I have sometimes encountered people who've worked for a very long period among Muslims, even missionaries for 20 years, who've had very false ideas about Islam that are very easy to prove to be incorrect. 
Uh, for example, I had a, a friend who was many years a missionary in Pakistan, and we were talking about female circumcision. And he said, female circumcision is not part of Islam. And I said to him, how do you know that? And he said, well, a Muslim told me that. And I said, well, here is the hadith that says that, uh, that you shouldn't cut too deep, Muhammad said. And here are the legal rulings that explain it. And here's the differences between the different schools. He said, oh, I didn't know that. So even people that have lived in is an Islamic context for a long time and have been instructed, they might have complete ignorance about really core aspects of the religion. It's an important thing to understand. And that's why you, as a Christian, need to take responsibility for understanding Islam for yourself. So that's the end of that section. And we'll go on to talking about the Sharia.